um, and where things stand even as we move forward. It's been a quite a heated discussion right here. And as you can see on Twitter, the same um, is going on right there. Very quickly, some of the comments we're getting. Peter Kemani is saying, no one is talking about the cost implications. Uh, everyone is talking about power sharing, um, and that's a problem. Politicians will always think about themselves. Okay, uh, here on that, uh, Peter Kimani. Let's see what else we have right here. F. Ombogwa. Uh, all you want to know is how my life will be better post BBI, not executive seats. Okay, we hear you on that. Uh, Jay Winner uh, talking about the fact that um, they're telling us to read the document, but there's no document to be read. Haijafika Mashinani. What sorcery is this? <laughs> Okay, G, I hear you on that. <laughs> I mean, it's a pertinent issue that has been uh, brought out severally, of course. Um, so keep the tweets coming in. You can get me at I am Jeff Morte or at KTT4 TV. We have 10 minutes to go, of course, on this particular segment, even as we get into the crystal ball later on uh, right here. So you can stick around for that. Very quickly, uh, gentlemen and ladies, as we move it along, I want to speak to matters in security, um, education, and economy. Let me start with you, uh, John, because even as it stands at this particular point in time, as we all face a Ghana, the other glaring issues that the country is grappling with and have nothing to do with only Mount Kenya, but the country as a whole. And you see what's happening in Capedo, uh, for instance, at this particular point. When do we see some action being taken uh, there um, at this particular point in time? The CS has gone in. Do you expect more from the president? Uh, well, uh, please allow me, Jeff, before we, we, we very get... Very quickly to, because of time. Yeah, just, mm. uh, just uh, 30 seconds. Mm. There is one very interesting question that you asked before we went for the break. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, what happens after the Mount Kenya after Sagana right, after Sagana Now, uh, I have seen a very, a very interesting rejoinder by the Jubilee Vice Chairman, mm. uh, David Mrathe, mm -hmm. who was actually uh, on this uh, very session yesterday. Yes. And he says that uh, for those who will not be in good books with the president... Uh, they will plant people who will be shadow MPs and senators from uh, their region. I think that one will, be, will leave us in a, very, in, a very, in, a, in, a, in a very awkward position. Because take, for example, how many senators have been invited and how many have not been invited? I am uh, seeing like about six senators have not been invited out of the ten counties and four have been invited. So how many shadow senators shall we be having? Very many. How does that one leave us? It, uh, will that one leave us more divided or, or, or more united? Mm -hmm. And there is also something very, uh, very, uh, something that he also mentioned about uh, the letter about uh, the Senate majority whip. Uh, BBI may be, may be a good document, but some of those who are selling that document are, are doing it for their own uh, personal selfish gain. And that is why it, it, it is having a bad name. Mm -hmm. It has its own problems. It has its own issues. Then another, you know, another set of uh, problem comes up. I'll give an example. Like in a, in a, in a county that I come from, the, 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 the people may have their reservations with the governor, Francis Kimemia, and the, those reservations will then be passed on to the, to the BBI. So uh, let us have our people come together. Let the president call us together, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll say that uh, 2022 20 will come, but this one is a constitutional moment. Let us first get what is, uh, all of us are agreeing with. You know, my brother has talked of uh, 35%, the, the good things that all of us are agreeing with. Those ones, we, we, you know, we, we should have them in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. These ones that are contagious, let us have a, a way of uh, bringing okay, those... Okay, John, I want to jump in there because even as you talk about what we can do in a constitutional moment, as we move right across the country from Mount Kenya to where I was talking about, Capedo, that's the least of their concerns right now. It's a matter of life and death. Exactly. In order to speak to that. Exactly. That is why I'm saying, uh, as a people, because there's a government that is in power, there are priorities that we must address. We are now, we, uh, our, our children just got back to school. Then we have that uh, issue of insecurity. Insecurity, only talking of Capedo. Mm -hmm. And I keep you here, people are being killed every, every now and then. Uh, security meetings, actually there was a day the, the, the regional commissioner, uh, Natambea, was in uh, a place called Ngarua. Mm -hmm. And this, that same night there was banditry attack. For, for those people, do you really think that the BBI is a priority to them or their own security is their own priority? So as a government, we should, the, the government should not uh, abscord its, its uh, key duty and man, uh, mandate. Mm -hmm. They were elected uh, for a period of five or ten years. First of all, they need to deliver to the people. Let them first give them uh, the, uh, security. Let them give them uh, the amenities that they require. So that even when you get that document, because somebody has mentioned that uh, we are being told to pass the BBI, it is a good document, but you have not read, you have not seen it. You are being told by politicians who always tell you where it favors them, uh, it favors them most. And actually somebody has also mentioned, they only talk of positions, what have you, what have you, what am I getting as a person? What is that person from Raikipia, that person from Capeto getting? Let, uh, let, uh, let, uh, let us not say that uh, 
everything has been in a standstill. Okay. It is now in a standstill. Uh, we first look at the BBI and then we have scored all these other duties. We have to first look at those duties, which will include, and it was in the, in the letter yesterday, which includes uh, economic re uh, recovery. We have been beaten by COVID a whole year. People are suffering. So that is something that is a priority to the people of Kenya. Edda, uh, I'll come to you very quickly on this one. Um, education, we've seen uh, school unrest that we haven't seen before uh, in the form and fashion that it's taken. Uh, you know, Ministry of Education mooting the idea of bringing caning back to schools. Is that the solution to try and get this under control? First of all, I think it was expected. After having children stay at home for over eight months, I think these are some of the challenges that were expected uh, when schools resumed. And so, um, caning, I, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Because uh, if you look at some of the cases, you, you have cases of stabbing, you have cases of alcohol and substance abuse. Eh? Um, that is, and somehow by that, I think we need to acknowledge that it's a shared responsibility between the parents and the teachers. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And so if you put uh, the burden entirely on the teachers and schools, then you'll be unfair. It will be unfair. So... Having said that, I think uh, there are very many challenges that we, we have been facing since the schools were reopened. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd like to, to encourage the right. Ministry of Education to keep going uh, because there's really not much that we can, we can do. Uh, in terms of preparation, I don't think that the government prepared adequately for mm -hmm. schools reopening. And that's why you're seeing um, so many issues uh, with schools and teachers and parents as well. Okay. Um, I think going forward, it is important that um, we, we, we are very, we become very intentional with some of these issues. Eh? Mm -hmm. And we have seen that the government can be effective when it wants to. So even with these um, schools, I think there have been cases of negligence, there have been cases where um, not much effort is being put into, right. into education. Um, so. I, I don't know. I think um, with time we shall overcome because we just started. So by mid this year, then we can compare notes and see how, how we are you know kids are settling in and how parents and teachers are, are working together to ensure that we keep going. Okay, Charles, yeah. Mignon, have you uh, have you uh, have you have the last word on this particular conversation before we get into the crystal ball? I want you to speak to matters economy. We have um, different um, economists talking about the fact that we as a country are in recession as far as the economy is concerned. Um, second consecutive quarter of shrinkage of the economy some people are saying the government we've had the they can walk and chew gum at the same time they need to stop chewing gum and just walk and fix the economy please what's your take on that let me start by uh, talking about uh, touching on uh, what you've talked about Jeff if you allow me the kids that we are talking about and that's why I'm, I'm requesting my brothers and my brother and sister to look at the BBI report in totality not the, just the bill we are talking about parenting. We are talking about how young parents need to be assisted, how they need to be taken care, to be taken care of so that they can be able to take care of their kids. And it's elaborate. It's elaborate. Administrative provisions are there. Policy provisions are there. So that because parenting has been an issue in this country, the kids themselves, kids who have been assured that everything is okay, even when they are failing at home, you're telling them they are fine, everything is okay. They go and face the realities of life and they are shown this is not okay. They cannot handle that. There are kids who cannot even wash their underwear, and, and they, are, they are class 8 kids because parents are going to do it for them or their parents are going to do it for them. There are kids who cannot assist a neighbor in need. Those are the things that are provided for, and I wish we can, we can look at all these things and look at how, what is provided for because that does not require any amendment to the Constitution. Those are things that are going to be there so that we resolve these things once and for all. Those kids that you're saying you sit back and watch, they'll, they'll, they'll be okay. Those are the kids who are insulting everyone left right, and center including elders on social media today you cannot access social media you'll be insulted until you get out of it even the president did he could not handle that, that that kind of stuff that goes on talking about the economy i think the biggest problem in this country is that we, are, we have we have no buffer we have we have no insulation if you are a young parent out there with a kid in school you don't want to take them to a nursery school a public nursery school because it's not good quality Yet governors do not take time to work on public nursery schools so that kids can go there uh, seriously funded by the, by, by the government so that instead of paying 20,000 as a parent per term, you pay 3,000 shillings and your kid gets equally good quality education that they would get from a private facility, including school buses, including meals, including all those things. If you look at even uh, hospitals, those are devolved functions again, you find... You cannot, there are many people who will pass 
three, four, five hospitals before they go to either Kenyatta National Hospital, referral hospital, or go to a private facility. Yet, if you had very nice facilities, you'd find a parent saving a lot of money, and uh, you know, because that's what's happening. You look at okay. Europe right now, it's locked down. England is locked down up to June, or I think July. But what they are doing, because they have all these basic, they're even giving their people stipends here and there so that they can be able to sustain themselves. But okay. if you look at the health scheme, the programs they have, all those things are in place so that it mitigates against all these pressures of the economy. And that's the problem right there. When you're talking about the big four, Jeff, if you allow me a quick one. 30 seconds. All those things child. are domiciled in counties. If counties had resources to make sure food was available, quality food was available, because agriculture is fully devolved, other than, nation, other than policy, is fully devolved. So if counties don't have resources to put food on the table, you are seated there with Medo. By the way, for the record, Medos County, Nyandarwa, has the highest cap, cap, per capita contribution to the nation in terms of uh, per person, contribution per person. It has the highest. Let, look at their roads. Look at everything they have. If the governor had su a sufficient su support to have the, all the roads properly done, you would find that county feeding literally just about all their neighboring counties. Okay, so we Charles. are saying these are the things we need to look at in totality without bringing in politics of 2022, 2027, 2039, because all those things will be there. But we continue like this, 2022, Jeff, there will be no magic. Nobody will walk out of their doors with a basket to collect money on the first day of the elections, 2022. It will not happen. Okay, we'll have to leave it at that particular point as far as it's concerned. Thank you so much, Charles, um, when you govern an expert for Thank making you time very to much. be on the show um, this Sano. Friday morning. Asante. And for the first time on the show, John Metho, Asante Sana for making time, Edda Wamboy, thank you so much for being on the show as thank well. Thank you, thank Asante you. Asante Sana, hope you have a splendid weekend as well. I want to move it forward and switch gears to um, the crystal ball, even as we get into the weekend. Now, the sporting calendar took a longer than usual break last year, and understandably, sport fans were ecstatic when action resumed on the pitch, court or track. So I spoke to Carol Redul, Kenny Gevenji, and Roy Karuhizi on their predictions EPL, the Kenyan Soccer League, which Roy emphasized is called football in Kenya. And now that the biggest sports showcase in the world is here in the Olympics, how do Kenyan greats fare in this showpiece? It's all about sporting action in 2021 as Carol Redul and the crew gaze into the K24 Crystal Ball. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Jeff. Good yes. to see you. Looking Likewise. all smart. You're also looking very, very nice. Now I'm wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like I always do. <laughs> Kenny Gavinji, Happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year. Bana. Welcome What's up? to K24's Crystal Ball. Uh -huh. so like I told Carol, what we're doing is just talking to you guys matters sports. Right. It's January. Uh -huh. We want to know by December. Your What's going to be cut Some of the things. Yeah. And then we'll come back here in this bar. <laughs> as we have a drink of water <laughs> and other soft beverages and just recap and see if your predictions were you know up to scratch right. or not. Mr. Roy Karuhizi, welcome. <laughs> Mr. The Great. Oh my Mr. Goodness. The Great PhD. Mr. The Great PhD. Yeah. Is any the title I've left out? A doctor. <laughs> doctor. Doctor of life. <laughs> Roy Karuhizi, Happy New Year. Welcome yeah. to the K24 Crystal Ball. Yeah. We want your predictions for yes. 2021 sports-wise. Okay. You know, 2020 was like one for the books, especially when you know the sporting calendar just came to a halt. Nothing was happening. I think same for I think it was baseball in South Korea or some some mm. country, like there was something going on. Even Belgium, I think. I think. Bel one of the Eastern European yeah, places. There was something never going stopped. On. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. But for the rest of the world, everything stopped. So, and Tanzania. Oh yes, because <laughs> Corona never happened there. Yeah. You know, it's it's COVID free. So <laughs> quote unquote. Uh, come to 2021, um, at least EPL is back, so soccer lovers had some action from late 2020 coming into the new year. For you, what are you looking at? What are you keen to see some action on for 2021 moving forward? When it comes to all sport or just all EPL? All, all sport. sport. Well, let me start with EPL. And it's fingers crossed that the EPL continues. Because, you know, as we all know, mm -hmm. uh, Britain is going through another lockdown, right. their third lockdown. Right. And uh, every week we are seeing that uh, games are being postponed because players are getting COVID even now in this month. Um, in 2021. So um, fingers crossed that the league can actually continue uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. This week alone, there have been people saying maybe we need to stop the Premier League because every week there are more and more cases. Mm -hmm. But fingers crossed uh, people stay well, stay healthy, and the league continues. Mm -hmm. um, I heard from some Manchester United fans when they were top of the league that they wanted... Drop over here. Of the table. Oh, go away. Go on top of it. 
<laughs> not for long. They, they, they actually wanted everything to shut down again so that they're declared champions. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> it didn't even happen last year. Trust me, it's not going to happen this year. Uh -huh. um, but uh, no, I do not see Manchester United winning the league. Not the way they're, they're, they're playing. Um, I think it's a fluke that they, they even got to the top. Uh, but it's just temporarily. If I am to make a prediction on who I think is going to win the in English Premier League, based on now, I would probably say Manchester City. Right. Simply because with their games in hand, if they actually win them, um, then uh, it will put, it, they would be on top if they mm -hmm. played the same number of games as uh, Manchester United. So Manchester United shouldn't celebrate too early. Should we but, the, the good in the room? Uh, or should we leave that for another interview? I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm talking about <laughs> winning the league. Trust me, Arsenal is nowhere near there. The only competition Man City is likely to get is probably from Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And the games they play against each other will be really key. Uh, Manchester City, when they played against, uh, who were they playing? Brighton and uh, uh, Sterling missed a penalty. If that continues to happen, right. City will lift, literally gift Liverpool the title. But right. I don't see Manchester United winning it. <laughs> Arsenal just needs to finish on page one and avoid relegation. <laughs> and with the form they're currently in, I hope that... Even that that's, a tall, that's a tall order, you think? Romero? That's a target. The target is Europa. <laughs> Imagine when your target is Europa. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. We're desperate. Well, I'm a Liverpool fan, mm -hmm. always been. Um, I think since I was, a, I don't know, I could walk. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was a Liverpool fan. And uh, the only two children in the house who fell down and something happened to them and they support Manchester United. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But uh, basically, yeah, that's it. So I, I, I support Liverpool football. Mm -hmm. yeah. But ob objectively, when you... when you're looking at it as a soccer pundit, it's not a Liverpool right. fan, yeah. do you think you still take the title this season? Well, we're still odd favourites because if you look at what the pundits have put out there, um, Liverpool is still up there, of course, with the uh, City challenging. Um, Manchester United, the odds have just started chasing, I mean changing because they have put together like about seven wins um, and basically not drop points because United were dropping a lot of points. Um, but so far, the consistency that is there, Liverpool are on, I think, 69 unbeaten games at home. Um, when you're looking about uh, at, the, at the front three, they are very consistent. And the only reason actually we are dropping points is because of injuries. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the team generally, they should be able to defend the title. Um, our only challenge is, of course, this COVID time. You're having a lot of fixtures cramped together mm -hmm. and, and, and that's causing injuries. It's causing, um, you know, um, a lot of stuff going on. Even people just getting COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you test positive. You have to sit out for 14 days. And remember now, with this cramped up uh, schedule, in those 14 days, you could have played like right. about four games, right. Right. which makes a very big difference. Mm -hmm. So um, with that in mind, I think, I think Liverpool are still up there to win it. Okay. Okay. Um, biggest challenge, obviously, is going to be City because City are looking pretty good um, with the game in hand, right? Because uh, they, they had missed that fixed day due to COVID. And whenever they'll play that game, um, will be somewhere maybe in the middle of the mashup of the FA Cup, the Champions League. and mm -hmm. So you, you find that at that point, Liverpool may be having too many games at the same time. Mm -hmm. So as Man same as Manchester United. And therefore, that's the place where they can be able to actually sneak right. in. Yeah, right. Right. That's, that's how I'm seeing it. Um, and our consistent team has actually been Leicester. Leicester have not dropped off the top four. Mm -hmm. So if you look at teams like that, um, with Liverpool's injury issues, and same as everybody else because of COVID, um, it's not very straightforward how that's going to end. Right. So it's, it's going to be a, it's a, it's a toss-up. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's start with the EPL. Oh. You guys are doing pretty well as, as of now. Yeah. Top of the table. Yeah. Does it go the nine yards? Do you do the distance? Take the trophy? Okay, let's not get carried away. We're enjoying the trip. Yeah, okay, we, you know, at the time. Yeah, yeah, when you're a madman <laughs> allowed into a palace, you enjoy the, the opportunity. Right. So that means that Man United will end up, they'll make it back to the Champions League. Of course, they're not going to win the trophy. Mm -hmm. But what's going to do is they're going to disturb people. Right. And there's nothing more exciting than being a mad person in a normal person's house. Right. It's an enjoyable experience. <laughs> uh, we'll be winning the league in about three, two, three to four years. So this is not the one? Well, not, not just yet. yet. Uh, about three years. Okay. Three years, because the good thing is at least we've got deep pockets. For you who doesn't know because of poverty, we've got a lot of money. That's what it means. <laughs> right, you're ungovernable. Let's bring it to local soccer. Yeah. Seems like... Soccer, um, football. 
football. Okay. Kenyan football. Is yeah, that, is okay. That I've never seen words like soccer. <laughs> You're not white enough. <laughs> For Kenyan football, exactly, it seems like we are running out of choices because I asked Carol, ask Kenyan, and they're like, "Is there anyone else other than Gore?" Is yeah, Gore no, no. Or Gore. There was a time chickens was powerful as fish. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. Right. Yeah, chickens are now just for Christmas, <laughs> and I'll tell you the fact is, it's because they don't have the power of just the crowd, the passion, and of course the cash. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that our local football is controlled by money, right? In other places, there's a lot to do with tradition and what that just buys into the club. What still, again, is po politics and money don't mix mm. very well. The politics has messed up. Gore has cleaned themselves a little bit out of politics. They're not out of the woods, but they're a little bit better than the other teams when it comes to handling politics. Mm -hmm. So clean the politics, yeah, then let the talent express itself, then get money to invest in you, and then you grow. Right. So I'll have to say, unfortunately, Gore is light years ahead. I hope that other smaller corrupt clubs can also come up. They use the word corrupt. Yes, you, you can't can. cancel that. <laughs> okay, corrupt guys can come up and actually create a little bit of opposition for them. Right. Let's bring it closer home, you know, as far as local you know, Kenyan soccer is concerned. For people who probably try and follow it, they'll always see the wrangle taking place. FKF, APL, back and forth. It's a I new year. Is it the same wrangle you're bringing into the new year, or do you get some sense of... I Almost call it La Mujer, the KPL, <laughs> <laughs> as in it is a soap opera. I'm laughing, but there's nothing to laugh about. Um, the difference between last year and this year, of course, is the fact that uh, Nick Mwendwa is back as the president of FKF. Mm -hmm. Last year, elections should have been held at the beginning of uh, 2020. They weren't held until around, uh, was it October, those sides? Um, and he came back. So hopefully he can settle and begin to bring order. Um, unfortunately, um, wrangles with certain clubs like Madhari and Zoo who have refused to sign the broadcasting contract um, are continuing. And uh, those clubs are still not being given the money that they should get from title sponsors, not from right. broadcast sponsors because they haven't paid for it. So there are still wrangles going on in Kenyan football. I interviewed Nick Mendo myself about uh, just before Christmas, and uh, he promised me that things are going to come down, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever the tribunals and courts decide, he will go along with it. He did eventually, but it's still unsettling because there's still disgruntled members. Um, unfortunately, football still facing the same old challenges of, despite having sponsors, not enough money. Mm -hmm. uh, teams like Gorma here, who have been playing on the continent, are still going to be playing on the continent in the Confederations Cup. That is money that they don't have um, to honor continental fixtures. Um, they have a new coach again. They're already on coach number two in the season. <laughs> so is AFC Leopards, whose coach lasted exactly two games. So um, there's a French saying, plus ça change, plus eh, la même chose. The more things change, the more the they stay the same. The same. Um, so unfortunately for Kenyan football, uh, that seems to be the order of the day. If I'm to make an early prediction on uh, how I think the league will go, looking at how it is, I see Gorma here and probably Wazito mm -hmm. challenging for the title. Okay. Or should I say Gorma here challenging to retain it and Wazito challenging for the title. Mm -hmm. Wazito have uh, got really organized this season. They've brought in, they have, they're, they're known as money bags. Right. Abramovich's team, uh -huh. in quotes. Uh, and uh, they seem to be getting things right. I watched a game recently against AFC Leopards. They walked all over my lawyer relatives. <laughs> um, so Wazito is going to do really well this season. And Gorma here as usual because they have the support. Okay. They're the Manchester United of Kenya, unfortunately. Right. In the, you know, the Kenya Premier League, yeah. who are you putting your money on? Is there any other team apart from <laughs> Gorma? But, well, um, the thing about local football is that we've still not yet developed, um, you know, a proper... A proper schedule where we are, we are going to say that um, there's competition to Gorma here, right? Um, the, the, the other teams are so far back in terms of talent and uh, enabling, so I don't, I don't see that changing for a while. So I'm still going to give it to, I'm giving it to Gor. Um, AFC have tried to change and, you know, they're trying a lot of stuff this season. A lot of merchandise being thrown out there, they're trying to fundraise through that, obviously, because Gate collection is not there because mm -hmm. you're not getting the crowds. Um, but I don't see them challenging AFC Leopards. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see it happening this okay. season. So, okay. Gore, for sure. Um, let's talk about like the biggest showcase sportsmen and women will have this year, the Olympics. How are you feeling, uh, Kenya, performing there? We have Rudisha trying to shake off his injury and all that has happened. Kim you know, Choge you know we're black well. people. When you break us off our stride, we get confused. The thing about Muzungu is they're very disciplined. Right. They keep to the rules and the, 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 the regiment. 
right? So despite the fact that there have been breaks here and there, then they're very disciplined. Mm. You always want to tell them that, hey, this thing has been off, it's been relaxed, it's been what, we've seen what curfew does to Africans, <laughs> right? They lose a sense of discipline. So I'm really worried about the Nyaudis being disciplined enough to have maintained keeping themselves in form outside the regular season. Mm -hmm. So I'm not seeing a great season for Kenya. I'm worried about countries like Ethiopia, which are very disciplined. Mm -hmm. Kenya is more talented, but are they more disciplined? I doubt. Right. Yeah. So I don't see the best out of our Olympics, but uh, had it been held without a disruption, would have been talented, would have won the game. Mm -hmm. Now it's about who's more disciplined. Mm -hmm. That's who's winning trophies in everything. That applies to our rugby sevens team as well. Are the Olympics still not the, the sevens team we saw? Because you break, once you break new these together, game shot, they're done. You need to keep black people united so that, I know it creates darkness, but just keep them together so that there's more work and more reward given. You know what? Another beauty this year, the Olympics, that should have been last year, yeah. and now this year. This summer, yeah. Uh, how are you feeling, you know, the Kenyan squad is? We had Rudisha coming mm. from an injury, mm. um, a bit, you know, his, his private life a bit shaken up um, mm. right there. Do you feel his presence of mind, his form, is ready to be the king again? Uh, well, you see, the good thing about being uh, Rudisha is that you hold both world and Olympic records. Mm -hmm. And um, it also comes with a bit of a challenge because you have to go back to the Olympic Games, and in fact, maybe he might be wishing that he actually was still injured. Right. So that he did not have that pressure. But if he's fit enough, I think he's still going to defend it. Uh, only challenge, of course, is that he's not been running um, the entire season due to his injury. Um, but I also see a lot of improvements, especially now going to the other teams. Uh, the ladies, I see them doing very well. Uh, we've been very consistent in the women's marathon, uh, middle and long, list, long distance running for the women has been very consistent. In fact, if anything, you can say the gents are the ones who are struggling. But uh, we'll all, we'll see this when, once, once we go for the, the, what do you call it, the qualifiers mm -hmm. to make the Kenya team. And at that point is when you'll be able to see how, how well we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And at times we talk about the athletes and even at the Olympics, servants will be there. Our boys were the glory every single time. And then counted some turbulence. How do you think it fares this time around? <laughs> I've been doing hundreds and hundreds of interviews. One of them has been with, uh, with Namkos, Innocent uh -huh. Simu, the Kenya Sevens uh, head coach, um, and with some of the players. Yeah. I had Colin Zingero on my show. I've had, some, I've had uh, a lot of rugby players on our show, even the women, because mm. women are women rugby. By the way, do you know that the Kenya Lionesses were the first team, Kenyan team sport to qualify um, mm. in Kenya for yeah. Tokyo 2020? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I had the, the mm. captain and uh, the team manager on my show as well. They said that the first Olympics was culture shock. Right. Uh. They have got over that. They know what to expect in these uh, uh, Olympics. Um, unfortunately, even on the international circuit, our rugby sevens players haven't been doing as well as previous years. Mm -hmm. But Namco says he's getting his house in order. The contracts are in order. They're trying to um, get rid of everything that was... Because uh, remember the time they had to block their jerseys and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to make sure contracts are in order so players can focus. Uh, they're recruiting a lot of youth, keeping a lot of experience so that they can mix and learn from the older players. Um, uh, there are a lot of mentorship programs that have been going on even during uh, COVID, by the way. There are so many mentorship programs. Even Kina Collins were, were involved and all the, mm. that stuff. We leave it at that, of course. Like I said, in December, we'll be back here. And we'll see whether your predictions are up to scratch or not. Ah, yeah. so, okay. so, 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 no so, problem. Okay. I think that's where we leave it as far as this is concerned. At this point in time, let the record reflect. Manchester United is top of the table. But not winning the league. As in all fighting for survival. As but always. not being relegated. <laughs> see you in December, Carol. Cheers. <laughs>